All right, welcome everyone. My name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this video today, I want to discuss uh, two questions that I get a lot. Um, one is where do you get your textures from? I use a lot of textures on my work, and so I get a lot of questions about where I got the textures. I want to talk to you guys about that. Uh, also, the second question I get a lot is sequential pages. Like if you want to build your coloring portfolio, where do you get the pages from to do that? So we're gonna answer that one too. And we're gonna start in wonderful Google. So, and I'm gonna start by searching for textures. And I wanna show you guys a trick that I've, I'm starting to realize a lot of people aren't familiar with. And I use this all the time. When you Google something, of course, you've got a, a little tab up here at the top that says images. And this will take you to all of the you know textures, images. Now, the main issue is most of this stuff is not free to use. You know, you can't use it. It's not in professional work or free work. It's licensed to someone else. That's no good for us. So right below the search bar, there's a little tools button there. And what this allows you to do, it allows you to, to filter this list. So we're going to use a couple of filters here. I'm going to start off with the size and I'm going to set it to large even though there are more specifics you can choose larger than and get even bigger but large is usually good enough for my purposes so I'm going to choose the size as large and again I'm on the tools menu I'm going to click large so that's going to get rid of all the little small ones and the ones that aren't big enough to work with because with textures you want it to be a high enough resolution texture that when you blow it up you're not seeing pixels and that sort of thing so we're going to start there. Now I'm going to go over to usage rights and there's an option here that says labeled for use with modification. That's what we want to go for here. So what this is going to do is filter out all the ones that are not a, <laughs> labeled for reuse with modification. So uh, now what we've got here is a pretty good cross section of textures. Now when you click on these, you know, double check the sites and let's make sure it's tagged right. But most of these typically comes from Wikimedia or, or some site where it's allowed, okay? So we do wanna double check that. You know, so you can go in and search for whatever types of textures you're looking for, say canvas textures. Uh, you know, that's a pretty popular one. You've got all sorts of, you know, different options here, but with just about anything that has, you know, some sort of subtle behavior that's pretty, sort of word I'm looking for, is pretty uniform. You know, there's not a lot of dark spots or light spots. You know, these are perfect for a lot of if you just want a subtle texture to go from here so anyway that's how it's one place you can go to find textures pretty easily now to answer oh and also i i will just make textures myself sometimes i had some um, uh, cardboard lying around one time that had a cool texture on it so i you know took a picture and you play around with the contrast and the brightness and whatever and you use it as a texture so uh, that's that's one quick easy way to do that now for the second question, sequential pages, I'm going to use the same techniques here, except I'm going to use different filters this time. So I'm going to go in and let's just search for sequential comic pages. And we're going to get, of course, the general uh, results here. So I'm going to go to images. And now I've got a bunch of sequential pages, but I want to use the filters again. So I'm going to go to tools. I'm going to go to size. Uh, I'm going to actually set it this time to larger than 2 megapixels because even the large you will get some like 800 megapixel images in here and that's really not big enough to, to, to practice on. So I'm going to set it to 2 megapixels and that's going to get rid of a lot of those. Okay, and a lot of these have already been colored so those you have to throw out. So we can also do that with a filter. So I'm going to click on color. I'm going to choose black and white. Ooh, look at this. So we've got this huge list now of pretty big sequential pages that are completely black and white already, okay? And and as a side note, for your coloring portfolio, make sure the art's good, okay? Um, if you're not a fantastic artist yourself, then don't color your own art and then put it in your portfolio. You know, fine, here's, you know, Stuart Eminent, <laughs> sequential comic pages, you know? So one of the best in the business Here's some work, you know. Uh, the sizes, again, relative to print sizes are pretty are on the small side, but you could still, you know, just size those manually to 300 DPI and get a pretty good uh, piece of color out of that. So, you know, Stuart's one of my favorite uh, artists, so if I was looking for something to color, I would probably choose his stuff. <laughs> so, 
And um, so yeah, it's you know you can put in artist names, you can put in characters. So like if I let's say that I'm a personally I'm a big Spider-Man fan. So Spider-Man sequential comic pages. I've still got all my filters the same. And when I hit enter, I've got this nice list of Spider-Man art sequential pages. Again, they're not all perfect. There's a lot of different kind of work in here, but um, it's a really fast way. Here's some Joe Mad pages. I'm a big Joe Mad fan. So, um, so yeah, you know, you could use this in your portfolio and to make sure you give credit, of course. And um, uh, so, yeah, that's two quick ways that you can find sequential pages or textures. Um, now, in my course, I do provide a pretty big library of sequential art there. Uh, that's included. I'll throw that out there. But um, definitely not necessary just to find good pages. And like I said, get on Google. It's the best search engine. Use that to your advantage. So this is a quick one. I wanted to get that answer out to you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you did. Uh, subscribe. There's actually a little bell now next to the subscribe button. If you want to be notified of every video as it's posted, you click the bell and choose notifications. You'll get a pop-up on your phone and whatnot that says a new video showed up. So um, it's a little bit, you know you're not going to miss any that way. With the subscribe button, the YouTube homepage likes to hide things sometimes. So you won't miss it if you use a little bell thing. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.